Hey everybody, can anybody tell me what we did for the first time since Halloween? Anybody? As the namesake of the video says, if you read it in the description, you might be cheating, but uh, let's see. Anybody know what it is the market did? Anybody, anybody, off the top of your head, without looking in the description. Anyway, give you a few seconds and... We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. So, the market closed below the 50-day moving average for the first time since Halloween. Breaking the streak. Breaking the streak. And I don't usually use the 50-day. It's just 50-day simple moving average right, right. here. Just turn off the roadmap line real quick. This blue line right here. Just remove some stuff. You can see it really clear. See this line? Look how long it's been since we've been down there. Right down here was the last time we closed under. Right up here is where we closed. 111 bars right there. 111 trading days since we've been down there. 111. Now. That ended the streak. That was the 10th most bullish streak since 1950. The 10th. Wild, right? So, here's the statistic, though. After ending a streak more than 100 days, right, that's what we had, a bullish streak more than 100 days, 88% of the time, we will end up higher than where we break the break the streak in three months time. 81% of the time, we're higher six months of the time, six months in time. But that leaves 12% of the time that we go lower in three months and about 18, 19% of the time we go lower in six months time. So three months time out here, man, that little bar at the bottom is sensitive today. Three months time is right there. Six months time is right there. And we have the top right there. Will we go higher in three months? I don't know. This could be a correction that lasts a little while. I mean, this one over here lasted a little while. Right? If we look back at this one, didn't quite last nearly as long. We kind of exceeded this one back here. Right there is where that one ended. That was only 95 bars, so it didn't count last year from March through August. We actually topped in July, but we didn't roll over till August down through the 50-day. That correction took a little while. Took a little while. Look at the start of that thing. And it took about 51 bars, just over two months. 72 days. So bars is trading days. Total days is counts the weekends too. All right. Whew. That's interesting, I think. Interesting statistic, right? So it's high probability. After we bottom here, after we find a bottom, that we're going higher than we've been. But not until over here. In July. And it's still high probability to be up here in October. That fits with the narrative, though, that we may pull back now. And Goose was kind of pointing this out, that Jerome Powell was out saying, eh, maybe we don't cut rates this year. So I think they should have just not started the the rumor they were going to cut rates at all, because I don't think they were. I, I don't think that was ever going to be the plan. 
I think it was always going to be... Let me pull this back just a hair. There we go. I think it was always going to be a Ray Race. Always. Uh, going back more than a year. Going back more than a year now. I drew this on the chart that I thought we were going to go higher to 8 to 9% before we rolled over. And look. Look. The DGS2. It's creeping up. It's about to make a higher high. It's about to break through. The Fed funds rate. If we do that, we're raising rates. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You got to keep an eye on this. It's creeping. It's coming. Not far now. We get above. We get above the Fed funds rate. They're going to raise rates again. This this tells you what the what's happening. We turn sideways, we turn sideways. Now we're rising again. This is two year constant maturity rate. This is the market's rate right here. This is the actual market rate. The Fed funds rate means jack squat diddly booey. This Fed this DGS two two year constant maturity rate. That's the actual market rate. When it crosses back above. We're probably going on rate raises. Probably coming up here. Could be out in 25. If you bought a house or you know somebody that bought a house, I actually know two people that bought houses. They couldn't afford. They couldn't afford the, the payments for. They're like, oh, it's okay. The Fed's going to cut rates next year six times. And, uh, you know, I'll be able to refi and afford the payments. I was like, oh, I got some bad news for you. And, uh, but people are believing. People believe, people bought stuff on the, the faith that they were going to cut rates. And then they just, it's just such dishonesty. I mean, it really is. I feel sorry for those people that did that because we're probably going higher. I mean, I, I drew a giant target right up here. I think that's where we're heading. Unfortunately for everybody. Now, all trading involves a substantial risk of loss. Past performance, not necessarily indicative of future results. Just because I predicted it in the past doesn't mean it'll come true in the future. And just because I got them right in the past doesn't mean I'll keep getting them right in the future. It's kind of a bummer because that's what I do. But anyway, this presentation is intended to be informational, educational, fun, and entertaining. It is not a recommendation to buy or sell any financial instruments. And if you desire personal financial advice, you got to hire and consult a financial advisor. So what does all that mean? It means don't buy stocks. Don't buy options. Don't buy Forex. Don't buy futures. Don't buy cryptos. Don't buy treasuries. Don't buy bonds. Don't long them. Don't short them. Don't trade them. And don't buy stuff from financial gurus such as myself without building trust first. All right. Make sure you trust the person you're buying anything from. Don't fall for those slick sales presentations. They're designed to create FOMO. And uh, just remember, if you hire a financial advisor to give you advice, most of the time, those type of people are just looking to make some of your money into some of their money, maybe a lot of your money into a lot of their money. Make sure you trust them too. All right. And that's what we got today. The calendar is pretty benign. The week, this week is all pretty benign on the calendar. We do have the FOMC meeting coming up in two weeks, right down here on May 1st. So we got to get through two more weeks of this. PCE coming out, I believe it's next Friday, right there. Powell's favorite number. And of course, the FOMC right there on May 1st. We'll see what we get to. We'll see what we get to. This week, just pretty benign. We get the jobs in the morning, or unemployment claims, excuse me. Unemployment claims in the morning. And that's pretty much the only number we got for the rest of the week. As far as potentially market moving stuff. And just, hey, it's not don't buy houses. It's buy in cash. Be cash buyer. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. That's tough to do. And, um. Uh, Here's a here's another chart I wanted to show off. Dun, 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 dun. Look at this one right here. Make this a little bigger. Check that out. That was October. 
That's now. Right? That is the most number of stocks underwater. Or, you know, this is basically stocks below the 50 day moving average. The number of stocks right there. And when we pop over here, look at our handy dandy notebook S5FI. We can see it's right here. This is basically that was basically S5FI right there. Look at that right there. We haven't been down here since right back there. We're already look, we're getting near my targets. Bum, ba, bum, bum, bum. Told you eventually we'd come down here. It just didn't know when it was gonna go. Here we are. Here we are. Probably gonna hit the 20 line before the bottom. Can we do it today? Maybe. It's just this tends to be a giant market oscillator. If you've never seen this before, S5FI. What am I on? I'm on tradingview.com. You can pull this up for free. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Right here. Tradingview.com. Just Sierra 5 Foxtrot India. Right there. You can see it right on the screen. S5 F I. The stock's about the 50 day moving average for the SP. Now you may be like, well, are is there like a NASDAQ version? Sure, there is. Is there a Russell version? You betcha there is. And we gotta go down here where I have them all, all listed. NDFI. Notably bearish, getting close. And Russell right here, already almost bottomed out. Right there. Why the 50 day? Because that's what they built an indicator for. All right, this is like an index thing. And I think it's kind of neat that it's like a giant market oscillator. We tend to get really hyped up. I mean, this is like human psychology right here. We tend to get hyped. We tend to get bummed. We tend to get hyped. We tend to, you know, we turn when we're all bummed. We turn when we're all hyped. It's just a giant market oscillator. And this one, this one represents the broad market. Why these three? S&P 500 is just general, broad, 500 companies, broad market. NASDAQ is the best of the best stuff. All right. That's our, this has been positive 14 of the last 15 years. NASDAQ. All right. Not the NDFI, but NASDAQ itself. NASDAQ index. 14 of the last 15 years, it's been green. That's pretty strong. That's like the best of the best stuff right there. And, and it, it amuses me. This is NASDAQ 100 stocks, right? 100 stocks. How the fudge do you have 0.7 of a stock? 29.7. It blows my mind when I read this every day. R2FI. Now this is Russell 2000. These are the small cap stocks. These are the heartbeat of America. The small companies, small business, smaller businesses. You know, it's not small business, but smaller businesses. And these tend to be able to make decisions and changes quickly to adapt to market conditions. But um, as we look at the Russell chart, the actual Russell chart here in a minute, you see this has not been all hunky-dory for small caps as they topped out back here in November 21. We're nowhere near an all-time high. Look at this. That would be back up at 2400 and we're sitting here at 1990. Nowhere near positive on the economic engine potential of America. Now, what we did do, we did touch the roadmap line. Found support so far. If we get below it, watch out below. If we bounce off of it, well, that puts into play the roadmap line bounce on the daily. Right there will be resistance right at 20, basically right around 2100. Right around 2100, right around here. Lots of stuff drawn on here because I had lots of, been talking about lots of different stuff over the time frames. If you're new here, welcome to the conversation. I like looking at the futures because they provide me almost 24 seven coverage. Only day we don't get data is Saturday. 
you can be like, well, you know, it doesn't open until 6 p.m. on Sunday, but, you know, hey, that's data on Sunday. And there's not many gaps. Like if you go actually look at the RTY index itself, you start getting gaps. And I, I just typed the wrong ticker to pull that up. It's like the SPX right here. When we go look at that, we get gaps all over the place. And we just gapped up. We were down here at the close. We just gapped up, left a bunch of unknown. That's why I look at ES. Kind of fills in the gaps for me. We just chopped all night. Choppy, 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 choppy. It was choppy all day yesterday, too. Holy moly. What an indecision. So flat and overlapping. It's like the market was waiting for something right here. Just waiting. Even NASDAQ wasn't much better. So just, just waiting. We did do a little nominal lower low on both ES right here. Come on. Right here. And on NQ. Right here. And that could have been it. That could have been the, could have been, could have finished that up. We don't have to go any lower. So. All right. There we go. <laughs> There's all sorts of things that come out of my mouth. <laughs> Quotes from movies and shows. And, you know, my daughter grew up in the Blues Clues time. And uh, Kimberly actually bought my daughter the big red chair. She had that once upon a time. Oil. Just look how, look how choppy that is. We made that spike. And then we've been chopping and chopping and chopping. When we jump back out to the daily, this is oil futures right here. If you're unfamiliar, CL1 exclamation point. I feel like it's important to keep up with this. And I also speculated we would come back and retest this kind of breakout, which looks like we're finally going to do. Maybe be able to bounce and go on up to test the next level. The next level is actually right up here at 90. Like I've got alert for the break higher and the target at 90. Sitting and waiting. Smile and wave, boys. How long could this take? It could take, well, I mean, we could consolidate here for a couple of weeks. We've already, we've already consolidated for like eight days. It can continue. It does not have to move fast. It can just sit here for a little while and then pop again. Got to store up energy and made big move. You know, when it moves, it moves fast, but then it can be lackluster for a while. I mean, you see right here, we chopped for a good long while after making that bottom back here in May of last year. So we kind of chopped for mm, almost two months, right at 60 days, 39 bars, 39 trading days. So, I mean, we could, we could chop a little bit and consolidate in this zone before we pop again. If we break down below here, well, we're probably going back to the roadmap line, back around 80. Gold. Gold has been holding up really strongly, so I would not bet against this, is my feelings right now. Would not bet against this. Now, we have a little 15 minute potential roadmap bounce here. If you want the roadmap line, link is in the description. It's like five bucks. I'll give you an easy button link. You can add it to your chart. This is basically a 15 minute roadmap bounce right here on gold and you may be like well, how do you know how these things play out and check this out right here change this down to one because buying 100 gc contracts a little crazy and right there look 78 percent of the time we go hit the 1272 on this time frame on this ticker Handy dandy back. I built a I built a thing that tells me the statistics. 46 trades, 78% of the time we'll go hit the 1272. Profit factor 2.8. That's pretty strong. Pretty dang strong. I'm building this into I'm building that this indicator right here into a thing that will alert me when there's setups. Not just on GC, but uh all sorts of things. Change this back to 100. When I look at other things, yeah, I've got a list. Handy dandy list, 30 minute market roadmap bounce. The beautiful thing there, I always I always pair it that 70% of the time we go hit the 1272. In that list, 
of 192 tickers, that particular list, 77.5% of the time, we hit the 1272. That's pretty strong. And that's like over almost 9,000 trades. Almost 9,000 trades I checked. So Now, we didn't actually close above. We got to get a close above the 618 to trigger this potential right there. But small time frame, looks like 2414-ish. Possibly 2420. Bigger time frame. Well, we got a pullback. If we can break above that 618 right there, we've been testing up in there. If we can break above it on a daily close, like a solid daily close, we can go higher. Oh, show. This, that was the high. So you got to do it right here on the daily. You know, the big, the whole picture. It's probably like a one hour chart. Yeah, there it is. That high right there, that low down here. Highest high, lowest low. Poked above. This is a game on right here, possibly 2478. Maybe like, well, how good is this time frame? Well, let's go change this back where we can actually check it. Load her up, buttercup. Eh. One hour not as strong as the 15 minute. Only 66.67% of the time. But it's been on a streak lately. So, not all time frames created equal for all tickers. Just throwing that out there. Something I've learned. But on in general, about 70% of the time on all tickers. So, certain, certain, certain swaths of the market, more reliable than others. And some things trend more than others. I guess that's what you might say. Bitcoin, almost down to the lows. We set right back here in March. Looks like we're getting a pre-having flush out. Who might have said we might get a pre-having flush out? Who said that? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Volatility, that's what that is. That's just chop. Look, we've been chopping in this range since back here in February. Essentially, even though Bitcoin made a higher high, essentially we've been doing nothing since February. The end of February. Just chopping. And we're in the exact same freaking place we've been since February. All that FOMO rally. And now we're just sitting right there. We may get a dip. That dip could last a little while. Typically, it's 200 days, 200 to 240 days before we rally. Now, if you're not familiar, I've kind of hit this every single day. So you should go back and watch prior days. We have about 360 blocks left to go. It's about two, two days and nine hours right there. You can see it right here. Here is the mining. Here's the mining. We're running ahead, about 23 blocks ahead. Last night, we were about 25 blocks ahead. And the transactions are stacked back in here again. And last night it was pretty pretty dry. So the when when you hear about people talk about the having event, what we're talking about is the mining subsidy. There's a you know, and mining is a misnomer too. Really, it's block authentication. Like they're by mining, people are actually authenticating the blocks in the blockchain, the chain of blocks that get mined, the blocks of transactions. When you authenticate properly authenticate a block of transactions, you get paid a subsidy. Right now, that subsidy is 6.25 Bitcoins. After, you know, after the halving, it's coming up in 360 blocks, right there, the new subsidy will be 3.125 Bitcoins for authenticating transactions. That will hold for the next 210,000 blocks. And then we'll do another halving where we cut this in half and go down to like 1.875. All right, so we got cooking. That's what we got cooking. So this, oh, there was a block just now. Just saw a block in mind. Right there, that brand new block. Now we're at 359 blocks. All righty, that's how it works. 
So Bitcoin, that's the main event. Not expecting crazy, super bullish price action for a little while. Now, the the alternate theory going here is that this was actually the, the, the lull. This is actually part of the, you know, we're actually accelerated six months. So we actually, instead of waiting for six months to break a new high, we did it back here and we're kind of consolidating before we pop again. Let's see if that jives with anything in the past by going to the all-time history. This was a theory somebody proposed. I'm going to turn this off. Oh, turn that off. Roll on back. I didn't click the all-time history. I clicked the wrong one. There we go. So right here was the prior halving, right? We've got to grab the all-time high right here. Come across. Come across. Oh, look at that. When we got the all-time high. So this theory could hold salt. Look. We did a very similar thing. We poked the all-time high and then kind of consolidated, found the bottom, and then rallied off. So this could be where we are right now. We could be six months accelerated and we could kick off the rally after the halving here any time. Let's see if this holds on back. And I obviously did that kind of crooked. Move on back. Prior having that high, pull it through. Oh, look, look, look. We might, in fact, right there. That one did the same sort of pattern. Break the all-time high, consolidate, then launch off. So we may, in fact, be six months accelerated. Instead of having to wait till December, we may, may be experiencing this pullback that we get when we break the all-time high at post having. It's an interesting. I haven't done this analysis before. You're watching me look at something live. So this could be, in fact, could in fact be that same pattern playing out, that all-time high right there from November, the last having cycle, busting it this time. We could go a little deeper. We could, it looked like we tend to tap that daily road map line could flush down to about 54. It could happen out here a few days after having and then launch off. Interesting, interesting, huh? No. No plaque, no nothing, no wards. Just block 840,000, then block 840,001. There's no nothing special. You uh there the there is a special Satoshi that gets issued. And uh, the first the first block after a having has a special Satoshi in it that it was argued that people would be looking for. It'll be the first one because of uh, inscriptions, the, the code change for inscriptions. There, This will be the first block that is um, ever mined that has a super rare Satoshi in it. So the first block that gets mined at, and there will only be, since we've already done, this will be, uh, we've already done three halvings. There's only 32 ever going to be. There's only going to be 29 of these special Satoshis ever. So that special Satoshi, um, it's it's been argued that the miners would try to hold up the process and fight over who gets to, to who gets to get this special Satoshi. But I don't think that's going to happen because there's too many other players that authenticate transactions for the miners to hold up the mining it just it's not gonna happen they're too they're not interested in that special satoshi they're interested in moving forward so i i just don't think it's gonna happen all right moving on ethereum on the spot market we hit the roadmap line on the futures since we hit it over the weekend the futures weren't open at the time that we hit it on saturday we may still be on a path to retrace down here this 2600 level one more time, if not going lower. And Ethereum may be classified as 
a security by the SEC, which I think could result in a knee-jerk reaction that pushes us on down, possibly back near the lows, if not a lower low. Definitely cautious on Ethereum right now. I liquidated off most of my position. Dollar index still churning here. We've set the odds. 70% likely we're going on up to this 108, 109 area. What's moving today? Lily was popping. Just a little pop, baby pop. Still holding on to their channel. Trying to. Trying, trying. I don't know if they can do it or not. Let's see if they can hold on to this channel here. It's kind of, they've been floating in this kind of channel -y thing most of the year and trying to hold on to it. If they break down, probably go back to the roadmap line. That roadmap line is pretty accelerated at this point, so it's not a long way down. SMCI popping. This one's gonna give up eventually. Be careful, be careful. Heard so many people talking about this stock that shouldn't know anything about this stock. Reminds me of this chart right here. Everybody's a genius. We're all going to be rich. People telling, you know, hey, and Terminator Trading Labs members telling me that they're, you know, people were like, oh, while I'm doing your gutters, whatever, while I'm doing your windows, give you a stock tip, buy some NVIDIA, buy some SMCI. Um, when everybody out there is thinking they're genius and giving you stock tips, that's when you need to be super cautious. That's usually indi indicative, in indicative, indicative of a top in a particular segment, which SMCI and NVIDIA haven't been rocking and rolling like they were and maybe do a retrace. I'm just, you know, I'm not saying they can't go higher. I'm just saying be, be careful. All right. It's your money. Elf Beauty, almost back to the roadmap line. Got my alert sitting right there. I'm gonna pull it up to the top of the roadmap line since it's creeped up just a little bit more. I'd really like to see that touch right down in there. That way I can go long when it breaks back above 194. No, maybe, maybe, maybe it's on the four hour. Maybe we already, maybe that's all we're gonna do. I like the daily it just simplifies everything a little bit. One decision a day. I'd like to see it just a little bit lower. Cause look, last time, last time we did that. Look at that mega rally we did. Holy guacamole. And JT ran out of time. I got faked out on this first bounce. And I ran out of time as we consolidated a little bit deeper. And then we did exactly what I thought we were going to do and rallied right up there and kept on going. It was crazy. So time is one of the most difficult parts of this whole game. And like I said in the beginning, sometimes I get it wrong. Not every time I get it right. The pattern did it. It just took way longer than I thought it would. FNGU potentially coming back to the roadmap line. WISA, W-I-S-A, reverse split, 150 to 1. Are you kidding me right now? This is a pile of garbage right here. Do not trade this stock. Do not trade this stock. You're probably going to lose money if you trade this stock. I'm just, just telling you. The odds are not with you right now. Look at this piece of garbage. We haven't even touched the roadmap line since back here. Look at this. Look at that piece of garbage. Don't mess with that. Highly likely to lose money. Highly likely. Even if you short it, you're highly likely to lose money. Diego, Diego. Whatever that is. Diageo. Um, it's another pretty horrible looking chart right there. Could we find support? Sure. Does it have to? Shoot, no. We got the market roadmap bounce right here. It's just upside down to what I usually look for. Look for 131, 125, and that 618 right there at 128. So pretty good little support zone right in here. Right in here. Now, Not necessarily high probability, but I kind of think it's going down there. KOLD, which is ultra short natural gas, did a split two for one. 
because natural gas, if you haven't been paying attention, been farting around doing nothing. Now, here's the support, here's the resistance, and if we follow last year's pattern, we're probably gonna do this up through October, November, and then do this. And we, this, this right here, this so far this year looks like a little mini version of what we did last year at lower prices. So far, look at that, that move up. We bottomed in February, topped in March, bottomed in April. So bottomed in February, topped in March, potentially coming down here to bottom in April. And then we rallied up through November. So that'd be a rally up through October, November. Just saying, the market tends to do the same patterns over and over. It's the same algorithms, the same people trading these things over and over. They tend to do the same sort of trades every year. All right. So even if it's not the same, you know, this this indicates there were more people in, in here, more, you know, more participants. Now it's kind of bummed out. So we get less move, less volatility, less moves, less size, less distance. And we may do the same pattern before we push it to the ultimate target down here. All right, I wouldn't expect a lot. In other words, I wouldn't expect a lot of action on natural gas, either cold or UNG or any of the other tickers. UAL. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Yesterday, reported losing money. Whew. Surprise to the, surprise beat. Less lot, lost less money than they thought. And beat on the revenue. So getting a positive reaction here today, but that's just a choppy, nasty, gnarly thing. I don't like it very well, but the robot pattern is there. Indicates we're going about 70% likely, 50, possibly 54 on the upside. OMC, just chopping around. Children's Place. Oh, man. That one's... Man, 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 oh, man, man. That could go out of business. I'm not even joking around. That may be heading down here to 71. Rio. I mean, they got lots of tricks up their sleeve. You know, they can reverse split and all sorts of things to keep listed, but uh, not looking positive. This one still not doing any of the things I want to see. Sitting here consolidating in the same zone it's been consolidating in for a long time. Three years, four years. Volatility is actually decreasing. And we had more volatility. Now we're kind of, it's a giant watermelon seed squeeze. Look, it's like my, my least favorite pattern ever. Right here. It can just keep filling this out and then eventually pop or drop. The size of the mouth of this thing is usually how far we go. Once we break out, so it could be way up here, 105, could be way down here, almost zero. Mm, I'm staying away from that. BHP, that's chopping, lots of stuff chopping. VNDA, biotech pharma, be careful on biopharma, medtech, junk, and ASML coming back down to the roadmap line. Need like a jingle for that. Probably coming back. Right down here. All right. Oh, look at that. Hey, we were at 50 yesterday. Guess what? We're at five today. You just lost 90% overnight. Ouch. Mm. That sucks. Anyway, that's what I warned about. Don't trade the crazy stuff. Just wake up back at the... That's it. I mean, I drew that arrow. We we're coming back down, and there it is. There it is. Ouch. JB Hunt. Well, apparently, logistics not going so well. I guess buying all yellow's assets not working out so good. I mean, they made money, but uh, disappointing on earning, you know, top and bottom numbers. 
18%. 18% miss. 5% miss. It's been like logistics is not a hopping happening thing here. JB Hunt, not a trending stock. That's just a consolidating stock. Eventually you'll probably break out. Not today. KLIC. Probably coming back eventually. Consolidating up here. Next fib line up, 777. 777. Lucky 777. Or do we come back to the roadmap line? I don't know. Uh, not much I can tell there. That's just, it's not a high probability setup. TRV. Oh, look at that. Right back down to the roadmap line. I've been warning about these. There's a lot of stuff doing this. Presents a new opportunity when we break back above 220. Heading up to 240, 250, ADSK. Ooh, that was a watermelon C squeeze thing. Look, let's see if it did the that size right there. That break right there. Right to it. Look at that. Look at that. Look at look 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 right to it. The problem is you don't know if it's going up or going down, and it can fake you out sometimes. And when it's done, it can come right back down. Man. Now this one, here's another one. This one did a nice long consolidation. Popped up right to the target. Went a little further. Just consolidating. Just think, I mean, be careful. It can come all the way back down. Whew, that'd be a rough one on Costco. LRCX. That one did head and shoulders thing right down here. And it popped right up here. Retrace would be what I expect. DXYZ. I expect this one to implode someday here. Messing around. Probably going to come back to nine. RMD. RMD. ResMed. These guys make uh, CPAP machines, right? This is like when Lily and Norm Novadisc are popping, ResMed tends to drop because, well, let's be honest. It's the overweight people that tend to need CPAP machines, not it's not universal. I'm not saying like if you're a skinny person, you can have you can have trouble and need CPAP. But the heavier set people tend to be the ones that need CPAPs. ResMed provides CPAPs. If I was Zimbic, kind of makes people not so overweight, then you need not so many CPAP machines. I mean, it's kind of the story going here. Oh, look at all those firing off. 10 o'clock. XME, AME. Or AEM and Rio. All 30 minute right there. Beautiful. For all my TTL members, you can go look at those those alerts in Discord. It's in the experimental channel. That's the new thing I was working on right there. The, the 30 minute MRM bounce. Look at that to drop on down. That's just choppy, sideways garbage. AMAT. Consolidating up here high. Probably going to retrace SAGE. The biotech rallied up to the roadmap line, right down to the target. Next target down, eight bucks. CTS. Probably on a path to 138. APG. Probably back on a path back to the roadmap line. Urban Outfitters came back to the roadmap line. Look at that. Look at that. If we can break back above this 43 area, 50 on the upside, possibly 53. If we break down, watch the trends of the lows. If we break down below that, something else might be in play. That was a heck of a rally off that low right there. Could come back in this zone right here. It's 
So we did last time. A little deep, 786. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mmm, no. So this didn't echo. It may turn into something more bearish. That's not good. I don't, I, not that I love this stock. I'm just, I don't like these bearish patterns. Like this is a, because we did this exact move up and held the 100% and turned down violently. You know, this is relatively violently to me. Unless we come up and break above that, like that indicates we could get bearish continuation. This is the first indication and it's on a very big time frame here. Hey, look at this. This is a weeks long chart here. That three wave up into that resistance where this move up and this move up are the exact same size. Indicated by the fib there, 100%. Turning down, if we break below this, 10 bucks. Watch out below. ITCI is nothing. That's nothing I want to get involved in. Bias for the day. Let's wrap this baby up. Get out of here. Go do some trading. And I have a webinar coming up to talk about some crypto at 11. For those of you that aren't in my crypto stuff, just sitting here at the bottom. Not awesome. May push lower. It may fill that gap. We've got this gap sitting here. I was talking about gap fills. We may go fill that gap all the way down there. Could drop it on down. Not saying we have to, not saying we don't have not have to. Just saying it's possible. Probable? I don't know. We usually fill gaps, and there's a heck of a gap laying there. Right below us. May go fill that gap. 49.70. And gotta watch out the, the rub map line way down here. 48. 48.50-ish. All right. Be safe out there. The account you save may be your own. Remember, it's not being wrong that costs you the money. It's staying wrong. Don't stay wrong. All right. In the face of evidence that we're going to get continuation in the direction opposite your trade, don't stay wrong. All right. Have a great day, everybody.